Nearly 200,000 youth enter the adult criminal justice system each year, and Lee was one of them. Born and raised in Waxahachie, Texas, he was only 17 years old when his life changed forever. My lifestyle growing up, I was a jolly kid, you know what I'm saying, happy-go-lucky or whatever, play sports. You know what I'm saying, I was into music, danced here and there, you know what I'm saying. And, had love, had love for animals. I'm sorry. When I went to juvenile, <clears throat> all we had to do was call our parents and they come pick us up. So it was like if you're doing something wrong, uh, and you and you and you're a minor, all your parents have to do is come get you, and you you're not in trouble. You're only in trouble with your parents. So they led they led me to doing more crime. Well, at 17, uh, my buddy was swimming at a swimming pool or whatever, and I came up there with my gun in my pocket, but, you know, didn't come up there for no trouble or nothing like that, but when I got there, he was already into it with a guy, and, uh, and he asked me to I have my pistol, and I was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? He said, let me use it, I'm going to scare this fool right quick. I said, all right, you know what I'm saying? It's my buddy, so I ain't thinking nothing of it. I don't think he's going to do nothing crazy. So I gave him the pistol. And when I gave him the pistol, he, he you know what I'm saying, the dude came back up to him and taunted him, and, you know, he told him, if you touch me now, I'm, I'm going to blast you, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the dude told him, go ahead and shoot me if you think you tough like that or whatever. And so... So the guy actually turned in my partner, you know what I'm saying? And what did your partner do? He, the guy pushed my partner and my partner shot him. And what he happened to the guy? He killed, he killed him. They put me in uh, accessory of murder, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my, it affected me and my siblings, I'm not sure of, but as for me, it was devastating. Mm -hmm. The household, it it didn't change. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, my mom was devastated, as to me, mm -hmm. because this was the first time this has happened to us. That, that was the first time it had um, something to that effect that went on in our family. You've been locked up a whole decade. You don't know what to expect in the world. And all this here, you know, I mean, it was, man. You be happy, you be happy one minute, but then you be nervous, scared at the same time. It ain't, I ain't saying you don't want to go, but it's just like, oh, what, what, what's gonna go on? What's gonna happen? You know what I'm saying? Being that you've been confined for 10 years, 10 calendar years, man. But when I got out, shoot, I always, I always like before I got out, I always read magazines and looked at clothes and you know all this stuff like that. My mom and my dad, they always sent me stuff like that. So I wasn't institutionalized, you know what I'm saying? I stayed, I stayed on point, you know what I'm saying? I stayed, I kept my mind in the world, but at the same time, I, I adjusted to where I was at the time. So when I got out, I just took it one day at a time. You know what I'm saying? How would you say the leap hole has shaped and changed you and your family? Um, I would say that um, he's brought um, a lot of love, a lot of support. Just, you know, he's there, like, you know, shows us all attention you know it's something that myself nor my kids were used to how would you describe lipo um well i would say that lipo is uh how i say a step up in my life i mean i'm meaning in the sense that He's a step up from my previous father figure. 
he shows us much love. He changed tremendously. Um, he was a hot-headed young man, as of all teenagers. Uh, but during a time in the penal system, I believe that kind of helped him when he got home to readjust and become the young man that he is today. Okay. Well, all I can tell y'all, man, hey, man, it ain't lame to get no chick. You hear me? It's not lame to get a check, get a check. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have more stuff <clears throat> when you work hard for your money than what you're going to do out in them streets. So I'm going to leave y'all with that. I mean, if you can't read between that, hey, man, <laughs> you out of there. So, hey, man, don't be no follower. Don't be no follower, man. I'm telling you, it's, it's just too hard. It's too hard right now. They ain't slapping you on the wrist no more. Better watch Fred 48. My heart.